Okay, so let's talk about sports. Uh, I, want, what? I want to show you a little bit, uh, well, a little glimpse into the world of professional cycling because cycling is, uh, well, people don't realize there's much more to cycling than what meets the eye. There's, um, there are a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to see by just looking at the sport or just being a newly, I guess. So uh, the thing is that I don't know how uh, much sports fans you are, but even if you're not a sports fan, you will usually be exposed to things like football, maybe basketball, uh, tennis perhaps, but no one is ever exposed to cycling. And it's weird because cycling is pretty popular, a pretty popular uh, sport. Um, actually, there's this uh, cycling race called the Tour de France, maybe some of you heard of it. And it's uh, said to be the third most watched sporting event in the world. So I don't know exactly who says that but, uh, and how they calculated this, but I read it in a few sources. Uh, and let's assume that's true, okay? So Tour de France is the third most watched sporting event in the world. Uh, the first two being... World Cup. FIFA World Cup and... Super Summer Olympics, that's right. So we have the FIFA World Cup, <laughs> Summer Olympics, and the third most watched event is the Tour de France. Now, uh, the thing is that the World Cup and the Summer Olympics only uh, take place once in every four years. And the Tour de France takes place every year, which means that every other year, the Tour de France is the most watched uh, sporting event in the world. Okay? So this year happens to be a year in which it is. Uh, that's why you all should join the masses and watch the Tour de France. Uh, also, uh, this is it, oh, it just started this Saturday, last Saturday. It's 21 day long bike race. Started this Saturday, uh, the 100th time it's happened. So, anyway, you should all watch it. So, a little bit about the Tour de France. It's uh, <clears throat> the biggest, the most popular, the most famous uh, cycling race. Essentially, it is cycling. Tour de France is cycling. It's a road race. They race uh, the roads, regular. Uh, roads it takes place in France, surprisingly. Uh, as I said, 21 stages, 21 days of uh, racing in total, uh, 3,400 kilometers. Uh, <clears throat> the race ends in Paris. The 21st leg of the race uh, ends in Paris on Champs Elysees, and the winner gets the yellow jersey. Okay? What you want is the yellow jersey. Uh, the yellow jersey is the holy grail of cycling. Everybody wants to wear the yellow jersey. Uh, during the race, the person who's leading uh, the race at the moment is also wearing the yellow jersey. And if you're not going to be wearing it at the end, um, it's still prestigious to be wearing it at least during the race. It's very, very prestigious. Uh, so the thing is, that guy standing there, he gets the yellow jersey, he uh, gets all the fame, all the glory, uh, all the money. But uh, there's a problem with that, in my opinion, because I'm a person who likes justice. And uh, uh, recently, I uh, realized a very important thing that I want to share with you, uh, which makes this a bit unfair. It's just not fair that only one person gets to be the winner, because cycling is actually a team sport. It's not your regular car race or running race or swimming race. There's, um, there are a lot of team tactics, strategies involved in cycling. Uh, that guy standing there in the previous slide, he wouldn't have be, been able to achieve it if it weren't for his team. His team made support him, uh, help him get him through the finish line, uh, hopefully first, but uh, most importantly, safe, sound, without injuries. Um, this is something that nobody knows about cycling until you start watching. I am not an expert or anything, but it took me uh, well, a while to realize that it's actually a team sport. And, uh, well, it's, it's kind of a paradox because there's one winner, but it's a team sport. Very strange. So uh, let's take a look at the teams. There are, in this sort of France, 22 teams, 9 riders in each team. That means 198 uh, riders, I think. But um, most of those riders, about 90% of them, uh, have no chance of winning the yellow jersey. 
They know it going into the race. They're not competing for it. Okay? And why? Not because they're not good enough riders, not at all. Simply because it's not in their contract with the team. They sign a contract, uh, each person in the team has their role, and one guy, who is the team leader, is competing for the yellow jersey, for the general classification, and the rest are not. They might be even better riders than this guy, but it's not in their contract. That's not what they're paid to do. And they do everything for the team. So the other eight guys are called uh, domestics. It's a French word meaning servant. Okay, they're actually <laughs> the servants of the team leader. They will do anything for him. I will show you a bit later exactly what they do. That's their job. That's what they get paid for. 21 days of very, very hard, excruciating uh, mountain stages sometimes. Not for themselves, just for, the, for that one guy who might win, might not win the yellow jersey in the end. There's also a Spanish term for that word. Uh, it's called Gregorio, which means soldier of the road. Uh, that, that's what they are, okay? <laughs> so, um, how do they do that? How, how do they get their team leader uh, through the finish line first? First of all, what's most important? Food, okay? Food is important. Um, I mean, they're, they're racing, okay? they burn four or five thousand calories a day. They want to eat, drink, and they don't want to carry all of that on themselves from the beginning because it's heavy, I guess, and also there's not enough room on your bike. So um, the team leader will be racing. And all the food is uh, in the team car in the back, behind all <laughs> the riders. So when the team leader is hungry, he will not go back to the car, but one of the domestics will slow down their pace, wait for, for the car to catch up, take the food from, uh, from the car, and, for example, and raise them back to the team leader. The same goes for water bottles, energy bars, whatever they eat. Okay? The team leader cannot be bothered to slow down and wait for the car because he's the team leader. Okay, uh, next thing. Uh, they protect the team leader from falls and crashes. There are a lot of crashes in Tour de France. You have 200 guys riding a tight pack. It's inevitable. They will crash into each other. It's enough that one person uh, fall. Okay, see? Uh, for example, here. <laughs> Someone tripped and the rest, there's nothing you can do. You just They all fall together. And there's these two guys, uh, these two guys, they're like, ha! <laughs> they're, they were lucky enough to avoid that crash. Sometimes it's inevitable, but sometimes uh, it is possible to, like, you know, be the bodyguards of the team leader and stop him from falling because he's the most important thing in the team. Uh, next point, sacrifice for the team. That means that if you're riding with the, your team leader and he has a flat tire or he falls and breaks his bike or his helmet, or whatever, you as the domestic will give up your wheel or your bike or your helmet and you will stay and wait for the team car with the replacement bike and the team leader, he cannot lose time because time for the team leader is precious and for the rest of the people, meaningless, basically. Okay? No, nobody cares where you finish Tour de France if you're the, the team leader. So the goal is time? Um, yeah, uh, the, the winner, I should probably mention it, is the person who, whom it takes the least amount of aggregate time through the 21 stages. You don't, you don't actually have to win the stage or any stage for that matter, as long as all the rest of the people uh, took less time to do it. Uh, sorry, more time to do it. Okay, uh, and essentially the work of the uh, uh, sorry, uh, domestic is to work for the team leader. Uh, that uh, means, well, um, in uh, cycling, I'm sure you, well, you can imagine that riding solo is much more difficult than riding in a pack because of the wind breaking uh, thing. Uh, the person who's riding at the uh, front of the pack works much harder and people behind him, uh, they <coughs> save uh, energy. 
uh, and that's what uh, domestics do. They ride in the front before, in front of the team leader, so that he wouldn't have to waste too much energy breaking uh, wind. So uh, usually those guys are really, really tough uh, racers. So they are very good uh, cyclists, but the people who do the hardest work, they never uh, almost win the race because as a team leader, your work is done for you. Don't get me wrong, I mean, to win the Tour de France, you do have to be an extraordinary uh, cyclist. And, uh, well, it's hard to imagine what, they, what those guys go through, but you cannot do it without your team, without your uh, domestics. You cannot win the Tour de France on your own. Um, okay, so that's about the domestics. No, um, Ten, as I said, 10% of the people are competing for the yellow jersey, and that means that there are 90% of domestics. Well, first of all, yes. Uh, all the other people are there to help their team. But also, in the Tour de France, which is the most famous, the most prestigious race, are uh, a lot of other prestigious prices, not as prestigious as the yellow jersey, but prestigious. For example, uh, the green jersey. Uh, which is a sprinter's jersey. Uh, if you're a really, really good sprinter, you're not that great at riding up mountains, but you can sprint really well, uh, you'll compete for the green jersey. <clears throat> and also there's the polka dot jersey, which is <laughs> the opposite of the green jersey. Uh, it's for the mountaineers, for the guys who, who, uh, who are good climbers. If you want to win the yellow jersey, you have to be an all-rounder. You have to be good at, <coughs> oh, to a certain extent, at all disciplines. Um, one other prestigious thing you can do is just win a stage. One of the 21 stages. If you win it, it's great. You have no chance of getting the yellow jersey ever, but you want stage. Great. Uh, people who win stages in Tour de France can negotiate their salary for the next year from from about 30,000 um, euros a year to 150,000 euros a year if you win one stage in the Tour de France. Um, there's the team goal, which is to uh, win the overall classification. Uh, the time of all the team members counts, but that's the team goal. And also just to participate is great because it's a dream of every little boy in cycling school to just participate in the Tour de France. And, um, and also you get experience, and maybe next year you will be the team leader, or maybe a couple of you. <clears throat> uh, this is the Pelzer. Okay, so uh, this is the Pelzer. It's the pack. Okay. The, the pack of uh, all the riders is called the Pelzer. Uh, they start out every day of racing together at the start line. 200 guys ready uh, together. And uh, if that's what they would do every day from start to finish, it would be boring and no one would watch cycling, not even me. Uh, but what makes it interesting is that sometimes people will break away. They will break out of the peloton and, and start riding faster <clears throat> to gain time or in other interests of the team. Um, basically, it's called attacking. Attacking is starting to ride faster than the person next to you. And if your attack was successful, then you're in a breakaway. Uh, this is a breakaway of about five <laughs> people. As you can see, they're from different teams. You can see it by their uniform. Uh, and they're three minutes and 20 seconds ahead of the peloton. And you see the yellow jersey over there in the peloton. And he doesn't mind that th these guys are ahead of him, three minutes ahead of him because these guys uh, have no chance to get the yellow jersey from him. Um, they're far enough behind the standings, so he doesn't mind that they're ahead. Uh, that's the break. Usually you, you will see in a breakaway from 5 to 20 people. They're all riding together, helping uh, each other, sharing the workload. And uh, each of them has a different uh, reason for, for going to the breakaway. Uh, okay, because some of them want to gain time on others, some of them 
are doing it uh, in the interest of the team, some of them want to compete for the polka dot jersey. Sorry, which you also could say in the peloton. <coughs> um, okay, so why breakaway? Okay, I will answer that, I guess, because first of all, we want to gain. Uh, second reason is to make the peloton chase you. If you are breaking away and you know that in the peloton there are riders who don't want to let you run away for whatever reason, you know that the peloton will chase you and the team uh, in the front of the peloton will work really hard to make them all chase you. That gets them tired and if you do that for a number of times, then on the fifth or sixth time your team leader can break away and then they're all just too tired to chase him and he can go ahead. Um, Okay, so if your team leader is in the breakaway, your job as uh, a domestic is to ride in front of the peloton and set the pace for the peloton uh, to be slower so that he can get away. If another team leader is in the breakaway, you're going to want the peloton to chase the breakaway. You're going to ride in the front of the pack and try to set a fast pace so that uh, they will be able to uh, catch him. That's how it's done, okay? Uh, I don't need to tell you about windbreaking, but that guy on the front is wasting most energy, sorry, breaking the wind. When he gets tired, he goes back, and the second guy does it, okay? And that's, how, that's what they do basically until they reach their goal. Um, here, uh, you, can see that, you can see that the yellow jersey is never in the front. He will never waste too much energy, he'll just sit. From fifth position or fourth position, but never will never be at the front. Also, you can see here that uh, there are riders, riders from different teams leading the pack. That just means that these teams have um, similar goals, and they are just sharing the workload instead of just one team. Their strategy was to team up so that riders of both teams will save more energy for uh, the rest of the race. <clears throat> okay, uh, so you want the yellow jersey, first of all, you want it, but uh, the team sets strategies and sometimes it's better to not uh, win the yellow jersey in the beginning of the race because uh, the yellow jersey puts more pressure <laughs> on the team to keep it. If you win the yellow jersey on the first day of the race, you're gonna need to, your team is gonna have to work really hard to keep it in the team. They're going to have to ride in the front of the peloton for all, well, for all the time, basically. Wasting a lot of time, the, a lot of energy in the beginning of the race. Not having enough energy to finish the race. So maybe uh, in the first week you should let someone else take it and then uh, win, try to win the yellow jersey later. On the other hand, the yellow jersey gives you magic powers. Uh, People who are wearing the yellow jersey will do anything in their power to keep it. If they're sprinters, they will try to ride up that mountain so hard and they'll make their teammates work harder. You, you, see, them, you see people wearing the yellow jersey do things that they would never ever be able to do without it. So maybe you do want it, it's kind of, you have to decide it. Those kind of stuff are, well, they decide them in the beginnings of races usually. Um, eventually, in Tour de France, it all comes down to the mountains. The winner is usually decided on the mountain stages because to ride the mountains are, well, it's a very, 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 very difficult uh, task. Only few can do it. Okay, this is an example of a mountain stage uh, of this Tour de France, one stage, okay? Uh, that's what they have to ride. It's crazy. These guys are heroes. They're showing well, super human abilities, that's, that's what makes watching it uh, fun, because you see people do well, unimaginable things. Uh, one of my favorite things about Tour de France is the race ethics. They have a set of unwritten rules that they all follow, and I think it's beautiful, because you don't see it much in sport. In football, for example, you see people uh, faking injuries all the time to get free kicks. In cycling, it doesn't happen. Okay? Um, you'll see rivals working together. For example, you see two team leaders, team leaders in the breakaway. 
they will help each other. They will uh, uh, switch uh, every time who will be, well, who's first and who's second, so, so that they both waste, uh, uh, don't waste too much uh, energy. I'll be quicker. A yellow jersey is king, that means whatever the yellow jersey says, it's done. In the peloton, if he says slow down the peloton, slower, speed up, it's faster. Uh, if he says let's wait for the riders in the back, they wait. Uh, you're not supposed to attack the yellow jersey if he's eating or, uh, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> or, or, uh, or stop to, uh, to answer nature's call. You just, the, the person who's wearing the yellow jersey gets well, great respect in the peloton. Wait, so if the yellow jersey stops and answers nature's call, everybody stops and No, 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 they just, no, 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 they just ride slower. <laughs> okay, no man left behind, that's basically it. Uh, if there are riders in the back who had uh, mechanical difficulties with their bikes or for whatever reason had uh, stayed behind for a little bit, the peloton will wait for them. And that raises a very interesting question. If the race is so ethical, um, how come drug taking is not... Well, never mind, let's leave that for some other time. I don't want to talk about it. Um, okay, what did you learn? Rider alone can hold up the power of riders working together. I think solo is much more difficult. Uh, being fast is not enough. There are too many factors. Uh, now, I just I want to show you a couple of some very cool things about the Tour de France that you can see. Okay, injuries. People fall all the time. Um, that is very painful, and what makes it great is that they continue. Ready? They will finish the stage. They're heroes. Okay? That guy crashed into a barbed wire, required 33 stitches, which he got later. He finished the 40 kilometers to the finish line, and then he got the stitches. Okay? Uh, the fans in the France are really, really close to the riders. There's no, um, well, they basically can touch them, help them up a mountain if uh, they want, and they go all out. They. Tour de France fans are really special people. They will bring a pig, okay? That's a very special fan from Kazakhstan, for example. <laughs> Some goats are also fans. Uh, you can get in fist fight uh, with a fan if you're a rider. It's a rider, fan, okay? And uh, this guy is the coolest Tour de France uh, fan. He's very famous. He's called Didi the Devil. And uh, he's just there every year. Every stage is a German guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, th this race is just awesome, and uh, you should all be watching it. <laughs> okay, so actually, I have several questions I didn't want to interrupt the lecture. So, first of all, about the domestics. Yeah. Is uh, the name. Uh, what is the historical origin of the name? So that doesn't mean they were actually servants, like when no, they no, no, no. the Tour de France started. Um, actually, the Tour de France started in 1903, and uh, then they already knew that it's, it would be cool if well, I won the win Tour de France. But it would be kind of cool if I had someone riding in front of me breaking the wind. Mm -hmm. So they uh, hired people to do that for them. It wasn't uh, a person. One person hired another person to do it for him, and. Uh, it was not allowed. It was uh, against the rules in the beginning. They only started uh, to. They put it in the rules when they saw that everybody's doing it anyway, even though it's against the rules. So, okay. So, another question related to that Can a domestic theoretically win the race? Or yes. the... Uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, if the team leader in the beginning of the race is the person who. Um, who is the most promising, who the team believes has most chances. And if during the race it turns out that uh, that person does not deliver, sometimes the domestic will uh, take the place of the team leader. But, but also, uh, but if you are a domestic and you have a team leader and you know that you can ride better than this guy, but this guy is still in the running, you can't do anything. You just have to sit there behind him and suffer. Yeah. Just, just one more question about the jerseys that are not yellow. Mm -hmm. How do they measure one? Oh, yeah, okay, good question. 
Uh, with the green jersey, there's a point system, okay? Uh, for, for every sprint finish, they have, well, these guys are now sprinting for the, finish, for the last finish in Paris. The person who uh, crosses the line first gets, uh, well, so many points, the, person, the second person so many points, and sometimes they have intermediate finishes in the middle of every stage. And then mountain uh, jersey, the same. They have, on, the, on every peak, they have, uh, if it's a more difficult peak, you get more points. If it's less difficult, more, you get less points. It's a point system, basically. Okay, but can, can it happen that actually before the sprint, you have to ride the mountain, so the person in front is not yeah. necessarily the best person in yeah. sprint? So yeah, it happens sometimes. But, but uh, in mountain stages, the first people will be people who are good at mountains who are not actually competing for the green jersey. That's why sprinters wouldn't mind letting them go first. Also, they, they are unable to, to be quick at mountains, so they have nothing to do about it. Okay. More question? Um, that's also a bit about the mechanics of the race. The stages, that's one stage per day, so at some time in the morning everybody starts racing and then they race until Everybody finishes the race and then they go and rest for the rest the, of the day until the, the, the next day. The, yeah, the race has a start and finish start, okay? It's a uh, race. All, It's about 170, <laughs> 80 kilometers on average. Uh, they all come to the start uh, and start racing. And then when they come to the finish line, wait for everybody to get there. Then they go to a hotel, sleep, come back next morning. It's not, not even necessarily the same place sometimes. It's the, the start of the next day is not exactly where the finish of the previous one is. And the yellow jersey moves, at that point they recalculate the time for everybody yeah. and then they choose, okay, now the yellow jersey goes to this guy, now to that guy, and in the end of the race, yeah. whoever gets the end, he's the winner. Does it give strength for the different parts of the mountains? I'm not sure about the bikes, but they do have different uh, gear for... Um, some stages are time trials, which means that they don't all start in the pack, they start one by one, and each person has in, an individual time, and for that, for that stage they have uh, different helmets, different bikes, different gear, because windbreaking is that important, you need everything to be. Well, but I'm not sure about the bike. Uh, not sure about the bike. More questions? Um. So, so it seems like the whole race, everybody's riding together, and therefore, I, I don't know, how is it a race? I mean, yeah. is there something in the end that all this riding together works towards, or...? Um, they're, riding, they're starting the race, they're starting the stage all together in a bunch. Uh, and then some people will break away and finish before the bunch, before the rest of the people, that's how they gain time. Uh, the, the real tiebreakers are the mountain stages, because in the mountain stages you have people finishing 40 minutes apart, or, because it's really difficult, and that's why it's all about the, mountain, the mountains. The so sometimes and, the group just splits into two parts? Yeah, even more, more than two, much more than two. Uh, it, uh, they don't have to ride together, they just do it because uh, most of these people don't even, don't have actual aspirations, so they don't mind riding in the pack. It's better for them. They save energies. The guys who do have aspirations, they will break away. They will ride faster um, if they can. So, the kid, kid, so why does the peloton chase people when they break away? Because if uh, the person in in the breakaway is competing against your team leader and might steal away his yellow jersey, you will want to chase them. You 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 don't want to let them get away. Is it just psychological or is that actually <coughs> tactical thing? Tactical. It's all tactical. The person has an advantage. The person is bigger, so it has an advantage over the small yeah. group in front. So. Because there are many people who can share the work. 